Hello everyone, Ember here, and welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a look at some new reveals from the set Crimson Haze, which is going to become part of our next big set after Temporal Forces, Twilight Masquerade. So, very cool set names overall, but yeah. We should see all of the Crimson Haze cards revealed at some point soon, I'd imagine, within the next two to three weeks, roughly, so it should be pretty cool to see that. However, we do have a lot of cards to get through today, so might as well make a start. And we do have some amazing art rares to take a look at, Pinsar and Infernape. Sadly, this Pinsar isn't super great, but it could be quite a fun meme deck. Slow Crunch for a Grass and a Color says discard all energy from his Pokemon. At the end of your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon will be KO'd, which is unfortunately just relying on your opponent not paying a retreat cost or switching out, which is sadly going to be quite bad. Although we do lose Escape Rope, and we at least have Calamitous Wastelands, as a stadium, so you could make something out of this, I guess, for like Spider Ops EX. It is possible, but at the same time, the energy is super annoying because we actually don't have Charm or Raihan post rotation. So, yeah, this card will be quite awkward to play, but I suppose you could make a fun meme deck out of Pinsar, hopefully, at least. Hopefully, it's playable. But then we have an Infernape line, and sadly, the basic and stage one monkey don't add any support, which is really what stage twos need these days, is just a basic or stage one that adds something to the deck. But this Infernape does have a pretty cool ability, Fire Dancing. It says once you're a turn, you may attach a basic fire, a basic fighting, or just one of each, from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. So sadly, it's not great fighting energy acceleration because we already have Garchomp and we already have the Gargankle, which accelerates one fighting and heals 30. So if you're just playing straight fighting energy in a deck, you might as well play Gargankle or Garchomp. But sadly, Fire Dancing is probably better in stuff like GLC, I would say, or like smaller cube formats. Standard, I don't think this ability is quite fast enough to be good. It's an okay ability, but I'll stretch your imagination, and there is some fun uses for it, mainly the Crydon that does 280 for 3 energy. But, you know, this is a stage 2, and, you know, I, I get the argument that Charizard's a stage 2, and it's great energy acceleration, all the rest of it, but Charizard can also attack, you know, and Charizard's tanky as well. You know, this could be boss KO'd very easily, so, yeah, it's a bit scary. Uh, unfortunately, this will be more of, like, a budget deck. I have thought about maybe making like an Infernape deck just on its own, basically, and then maybe you could play one Crydon. Just because Scorching Fire dealing 200 is actually quite nice. You know, you could combine this with Divine Band and Maximum Belt. So, you know, with Silene to retrieve those cards, you could swing for like 250 potentially some turns, which is huge against basic EX decks. So maybe there is a budget deck to be had out of Infernape, and it should be pretty fun to try out regardless. But yeah, you know, I think it's one of those cards that's playable, but it's not, like, great. You know, it's not a great card, but it's playable. It's not bulk either, which is cool. At least it's usable, and the artwork is very cool, so quite happy about that. Then we have more Peko from Crimson Haze to take a look at, which does combine quite nicely with the Macargo that we're about to have a look at. So this more Peko says, once in your turn, you may look at the top card of your deck, then you may discard it. Now, this doesn't sound fantastic, but it does mean that if you're relying on your top deck to do more damage that turn, or maybe you're trying to, you know, discard something, like maybe even an Archops, for example, in a Lugia deck, then this ability is actually quite nice. It's just useful, you know? You can also just thin one card, potentially, you know, you look at the top card of your deck, it's a basic energy. Oh, I don't want a basic energy next turn or this turn, so I just discard it, you know? Could be a bit of thinning, that's quite nice. Also, the attack, pick and patch for one lightning energy. So sadly, not very splashable in every deck, but still a nice option in Lightning decks. Attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. So you could use this in a Maridon deck, but it seems a wee bit too slow, I think, for current standard. Maybe next, next rotation when, you know, more stuff rotates and the format maybe gets a bit slower, which I doubt it, the format will ever be slow enough for these kind of attacks, but especially when you're not doing any damage, but still. I like the attack, I like the ability, the ability especially is probably why you would play more Peko, so yeah, pretty cool card overall, and hopefully not too expensive to pick up. Then we get to the real meat of the video, the Macargo EX. Very excited for this card because Macargo GX was actually one of my favorite decks from the entire Cinnamon era. Really hold that deck in high regard, I thought it was an awful lot of fun, and could definitely win a lot of games, so huge fan of Macargo in general, and glad to see it actually get an EX card. 
So 270 HP, it is a Terra type, but it's a mono Terra type, so it doesn't actually change its typing, which is cool, because it basically just means you get the bonus of being a Terra type without being, you know, awkward synergy. You know, how some Terra types are really awkward to play because you have to give them different energy acceleration, and sometimes that's difficult because, you know, like you can't use the generator on Toxtris DX because it's a fighting type or something. So, you know, it gets a bit awkward sometimes, even though it's a cool effect, so... Having the immunity to bench damage is quite nice against a flight Radiant Greninger. So, yeah, cool to see. And it has two attacks. The first one, Hot Magma, is okay. 70 plus burn just means 90 damage effectively, which, to be honest, is okay. It will get rid of some stage ones that are quite pesky or some single prize threats, but mainly the card is here for ground burn. For two Fire and Nicolas, this attack does 140 damage, and each player gets to discard the top card of their deck. And it does 140 more for each energy card discarded in this way. So the odds of your opponent ever discarding an energy without manipulation is extremely low, shall we say. So I don't think we need to worry about this thing ever want to curing a Pokemon, which it can do, but it's it's pretty rare. Most of the time, what you'll want to do is manipulate your own top deck to do 280. And there is actually quite a few ways of doing that. We do have Cryptomaniacs Deciphering. And we did code breakers deciphering. Sorry, I keep calling it that for some reason. But yeah, code breakers deciphering to fiddle two cards on the top of your deck, which is quite nice. And then of course we do have the more peco that we just looked at. And you know, I mean you could even use stuff like Comfy to just, you know, scan through your deck a bit and chorus and I'm I'm trying to avoid thinking as a, a you know lost zone deck, but that might be the best way to play this card, to be honest, because even though 280 is a lot of damage. Getting three Fire and G on the cargo is quite annoying, actually, and quite difficult because Magma Basin will accelerate one energy, but also plays two damage counters. Mela is okay, but again, only accelerating one energy. You could use like Arceus Armorouge, and then at that point, it's more like an Arceus Armorouge deck. So if you just want to play a Macargo EX deck, I know the argument when people, you know, especially competitive players, look at this card, they'll instantly think, oh, it's a worse Charizard, just play Charizard. And I'm like, no, you know, the people play this game to play different decks. They don't just play it to play the best deck. If we all did that, then YouTube content would just be Charizard videos. It would be nothing else. So the fact that Macargo Yax is at least playable is a plus in my book. It's just getting the three energy on there is going to be a bit of a pain. And expanded, it's a lot easier because we have Welder, which is, you know, a very pay-to-win Fire-type supporter. But it's a lot of fun. So I do think this card is playable. I do think it will be a lot of fun to try out in Standard. And if not, it'll be pretty fun in Expanded. However, of course, getting the three energy on there might even have to use something like Energy Sticker to get it on. But yeah, the attack cost is just annoying, basically. It's a very annoying thing. But, you know, it's a cool card. And I like my cargo. So, yeah, very cool. Then we have Cremorant and Applin. Sadly, Applin be not doing anything. And I don't think we've seen... Well, we have actually seen the, the stage one, but it wasn't very good, I think. There might be a Hydrapple in this set, potentially. If we get a Hydrapple, that's cool. I do love Hydrapple as a Pokemon. Uh, if you've never seen a Hydrapple, then I won't spoil it for you. You can go look it up or get it in the games if you're not up to that point in the DLC. But yeah. Hydrapple is a very cool Pokemon, so I hope it gets a good card, basically. However, we can look at this Cremorant, which for three colors says discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 snipe to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Quite a good attack, to be honest. It just means that you can finish off something, maybe target down a B-Barrel, which looks to be pretty good post-rotation B-Barrel decks. So I do quite like this attack. However, of course, you do have to get the three energy on there. But, you know, you could use stuff like Double Turbo if you really wanted to. You could use, um, uh, was it, Baxcalibur. So I guess that's why this is here. I know Kyogre, uh, Kyogre, Kyogre, Kyogre is for uh, a bit more damage. It's like 180 or something. But the thing is with Kyogre, it's also for 4 energy. It has to be water. This is just colors. So you could splash us into anything as long as you can actually accelerate the energy. But honestly, I don't hate this card. I think this card's actually pretty good. You know, just 120 snipe potentially anywhere in the late game. You know, a lot of games these days, it feels like you KO a single prize Pokemon that evolves on like the first few turns. And then you have to work your way through several EX Pokemon, usually two. So that's another four prize cards. So you're down to one prize card. So this effectively just means that 
if you don't have a boss in the late game, you can still get that snipe off and, you know, finish off with Varel or maybe like an evolving stage one or something. I don't know. It doesn't seem that bad, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what everyone else thinks about Cramorant. But, yeah, doesn't seem that bad at all. And then the last card that I want to take a look at today was Fire Giraffe, which is a bit of a sad state. I think, you know, this card is, is very fun. It's very cool. But sadly, I don't think it's going to be super great. Mind Rumble does, or Mid Rumble as it's called here, does 40 damage for each stage 1 Pokemon you have in play for 2 colors. So this thing is like screaming at you to use Double Turbo, but at that point you're doing pennies for damage. So probably don't use Double Turbo for this. You know, use Zatu. Zatu is actually probably a good idea for this because Zatu will be a stage 1, so that's more damage. Zatu will be Energy Acceleration, that's cool. And Zatu will allow you to draw cards, which is important for this deck to remain consistent. So... I think Zatu plus like be Barrel maybe, or maybe even something like Miss Magius could be cool with this. Definitely like a very cool single prize card. You could definitely play this in GLC. It'd be quite scary in that actually. There's a lot of good stage one psychic types. So yeah, I definitely think this is good in GLC, maybe in standard as like a more of a budget deck, but 40 damage honestly just isn't a lot of damage. You know, It's just not really... Like, uh, look at Dugong doing 40 for every energy you shuffle into your deck. Yeah, guys, do you remember Dugong? Dugong that hasn't done anything since it was released. That was a 40 times multiplier. You know, Malamar hasn't done anything since it got bad. So, and that was a arguably much easier 40 times multiplier to use. So I'm kind of skeptical that this Fire Giraffe could be anything cool. But, you know, 40 damage, it could be all right. You know, maybe we get a Skyfield reprint, and then this card becomes actually quite scary, but you still need a lot of stage ones in play, even then. So it's not that like you can cheat a Luxray out, for example. So, yeah, still a pretty cool card, though. Interested to try this out, but I think for me personally, the highlight is the Macargo. Also, I guess you could use Infernape to... I never thought about this, actually, but you could use Infernape to pay for some of this attack cost, because it doesn't matter which energy you discard from the top of your deck. It could be Fire or Fighting, so... That is a nice option at least. So I guess Infernate Macargo is going to be the go-to rogue deck from Twilight Masquerade. But, you know, it could be a lot of fun. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video not just really to talk about these cards, but also to try and get a sense of how powerful the cards might be from Crimson Haze. And to be honest, they don't look super powerful. At the very least, they're interesting, though, and they do have uses, which is kind of what you'd hope from an expansion set like Crimson Haze. So I do hope that, you know, a lot of these cards end up being better than some I think they might be. You know, this Macargo might end up being unplayable garbage, but hopefully it's, you know, at least playable and at least cool. But yeah, I'll probably sink a lot of credits into Full Arts and Alton Arts if they release them for Macargo. So yeah, seems pretty cool. But yeah, it's been our power and yeah, thank you for watching.